Hi. Um, how about you explain to the people what we are doing right now? All right. So we're having to record via Zoom because my summer break is over. And I cannot make it over to Ashlyn's house very easily at the moment. Because again, Ashlyn lives... Someone decided to move an hour away from me. Not quite an hour, but like right now with traffic, it would be over an hour. So Absolutely. We're recording from home, from our home offices. And if you hear Uh, extra noise... Animals. And someone has a husband doing something. I don't know what he's doing, but I heard the microwave go off, so if he gets too loud, we'll shut the door. Yes. Um, Well, welcome to our virtual podcast, if you're watching this. If you're not watching this and just listening to it, then pretend that we're in our normal situation and we're just living our best lives. It may sound a little different, though, because I am recording Zoom and Ashlyn's using a nice mic at home, but still, it's a recording of her nice mic, so... And it's not as nice of a mic as Haley's, so... Like, apparently, just... because she could hear my husband turning on our... I heard the gas. ...gas stovetop. Oh. She heard the clicking all the way in the kitchen, so apparently my mic is pretty nice. And that's what we, a lot. we normally record with, but we'll make do. And it's we're actually... Fun. We're recording two books and one right now. So you may get, like, double information with both. Yes. Okay. Um... All right, well, uh, so, as mentioned in our last podcast, this one is uh, The Deal. That is what we're going over today. Uh, The Deal by L. Kennedy. Do you have it pulled up? Insert screenshot. I do. Oh, yes. And for those who can't see... I'm holding up my Kindle. (laughs) She's holding up her Kindle to the camera because it shows the main girl, Hannah, in some kind of jersey. No face. Yes. Yes. All right, Haley, let's give the people what they want. Tell us what this book is about. Girl, I need to actually know what the synopsis says because I might give out too many details. Where's my Goodreads at? <laughs> it was just, it was good. I got I to gotta go to my books real fast. Books, and I just finished it last night. You finished it today. I finished it literally like 30 minutes ago. 30 minutes ago. I'm living my best life. Okay, so here's what it's about. Oh. Goodreads has messed up the synopsis of the book and cut half of it out. Ideal. But, basically, it's about Hannah Wells and Garrett Graham. And Hannah has some issues with her love life. And she's not able to do things with men, but apparently Garrett gets all of her drives going. The only downside is Garrett is not the one she wants. She wants this other guy and ends up using Garrett fake dating to make that guy jealous. That's in the synopsis. But Garrett's also using Hannah because he's flunking one of his classes and he needs a tutor. And he's also on the hockey team. It's the first sports (laughs) romance that we read. But honestly, there was not a lot of hockey in it, so... I mean, there was a a very good amount for someone who doesn't enjoy sports. And it wasn't... I mean, it was a little confusing reading the one hockey scene where Garrett was actually, like, playing. (laughs) Doing things? Yes. Um, Yes, I have been to a total of two hockey games in my life, and um, I hardly knew what was going on, but I enjoyed myself very much. I've never been to a hockey game, so... That is unfortunate. But now I want to go, because it look, it sounds like it's a very rough sport with some rough men. It certainly can be. The two that I have been to were not. Um, I think they were relatively tame. I don't even think there was a fight that broke out, which apparently hockey is notorious for fights breaking out. And I was a little upset that I did not see that. Well, then maybe we need to go to more hockey games. You are absolutely right. Dallas Stars, let's do it. Dallas Stars. So, um, yeah, that was just a little quick synopsis, but this book has, it's not even enemies to lovers because they're not enemies. He's like, he annoys her and she just wants him to leave her alone, but then they really become like best friends. So it's friends to lovers, 
And I'm no, his friends still, I think that's good. Kind of possessive, but not really. Like, he's not an alpha, an alpha hole, whatever people call Definitely him. Not. Definitely not. But there is, I will say there is, sorry, I thought, I thought my husband left something on in the kitchen. There is um, one trigger warning everyone needs to know about, that there is mention of sexual assault. It is not explicit in the book, but it does center around the fa- main female character. And it was something that and happened. it does not, yeah, yeah, it's not current. It's not current. It's something that happened five years before this book takes place. So if that is something that you are not down to have in a book skip this one but like i said it's not explicit it's something in her past that plays a part in her present correct okay um i thought that, that was a really good synopsis for what you did there thanks the i made it up just... oh well i mean i mean because i mean goodreads cut out half the synopsis so that's okay um now if you have not read the book this is where we tell you to stop listening it's good skedaddle go get that book read it and if you're still here, all bets are off, and it's time to proceed with our ratings. We will have some you read it, and things will be spoiled. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you want to go first? Ratings. Yeah, ratings. Um, okay, so I gotta say, is it a surprise I gave it a 5 out of 5 on both the plot and the smut? Ashlyn, is it a surprise that I gave it a 5 out of 5? It is a surprise. I mean, only a little bit because it was very good. But the smut, I did not give it a five. Where I'm not surprised. I gave it a three out of five. Wow. Wow. So you just hate. No, I all... think I think this book was like the perfect smutty book. There was so much plot and like character development. I was so focused on the character development when they finally had sex. Like, yeah, it was there. But it was not as spicy as other books that I've read. That is absolutely true. But the spice that was in it is the reason I gave it five out of five. I think she wrote, 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 wrote it. It's guys I've worked all day. Um, she wrote it very well. Um, do you think we would classify this as a slow burn? I think it is. Like, because when I you, mean, it was almost like halfway through, right? It, oh. But, like, anything sexual happened. It's too creepy having Matt in the kitchen. His head, the door. his head just popped up. Oh, Matt downloaded this book on Audible. I am so proud. Because we were coming back from Houston, and for those who don't know, it's, like, a, almost four hours. It's, like, three and a half hours from our house to Houston. Uh, so we came back, and I read him the first 20% of the book out loud. Nothing explicit in the first 20%. Yes. But we read it. My, now my dog's barking. Oh, there he is again. Look how oh creepy gosh. he a is. Learner. Go away. Um, but I asked him if I could keep reading it without him because we were going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And he said he wanted someone to keep reading it to him, so he downloaded it on Audible. But that just okay. goes to show, he does not... This is his first romance novel that he has listened to, so... I'm so interested. I mean, I guess it makes more sense. But, but like, he's not a big sports guy. So. He's not. I think it was more of he was bored in the car and he didn't want to be left out when I was reading the book. Um, That's fair. But then he kind of got invested because when I would get to the next chapter, kind of like we would recap. But he also had some good insight on the male mind and how a female author writes a male is not truly accurate to what most men actually have going through their head. I don't know. Because Matt would pause and he was like, no guy, no guy would be thinking things like this in their head. (laughs) I was like, okay, Matt. (laughs) But it's a romance novel. We need things spelled out for us. (laughs) Like that's why we enjoy them. Yes. They're the perfect guy who, you know, doesn't exist. But yeah, so he, he is still listening to it. I don't know how far he is, but he listened to it last night when I was reading it. I'm so proud. Also, I'm drinking a ginger beer. Look at you, uh, the non-alcoholic guys. Know. I'm drinking a non-alcoholic unsweet tea. Or, <laughs> no, excuse me. No, it is sweet. I am <laughs> lying to you because I, what is unsweet tea? Gross. Um, the downside is they were out of Milo's, so Ew. I had to get red dyke. Mm. I'm not happy about that. Not as good. Not as good. Well, this I... is not sponsored, but Milo's hit me up. <laughs> I went to Target today. And um, I tried to get one of those 
you know, they, they have like those cocktails like in the bottles and it's like not made with liquor because Target can sell it. So it's like wine. Uh-huh. They had one and it was the blue Hawaiian and I grabbed it to take it home while I was looking at it and there's like chunks floating in it and it says shake well. So like I shook it, but like the chunks didn't dissolve. And I was like, and it says made with real fruit. And I was like, okay. And I poured some into my drink and it was just like debris was floating all in it, but it was blue debris. So like it was blue. I took a sip. It tasted like sugar. I don't know. I took a sip. It tasted like rubbing alcohol and almost threw up. So I just dumped it down the sink and we had a ginger beer in the fridge. So (laughs) that's what I'm drinking. Ginger beer is just as good. It's good. Um, It makes me think I'm drinking a Moscow mule, but I'm not. (laughs) Yes, that is correct. Um, well, that was very completely off topic, but, You're welcome. um, <laughs> as per usual here on our little podcast that we do, uh, that happens pretty frequently. So, um, so yeah, so the book overall rating, I gave it a five out of five and you gave a four out of five. No, five out of five. Even though you gave this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plot five out of five. Yeah. Story. Totally makes sense. It was great. Um, Okay. <laughs> So, uh, where would you like to start? I want to start with, I actually, I, okay, let's start with Garrett stalking her, essentially. Yes. Honestly, I'm into it. it. I mean, coming from someone who read and enjoyed the Hunting and Haunting Adeline series, apparently it is a genre that I am A-OK with. I, I mean, obviously it wasn't that extreme. There's nothing quite that extreme of uh, stalking. Yeah, I don't um, think any can anything can really compare to haunting. I didn't read hunting, but I read haunting. Yes, most definitely not. But I was, I mean, I just enjoyed that he was like, no, you see, here's the thing. I know what I want and I'm going to get it. And I was like, in real life, absolutely not. Back to fuck up. But in this world, I yeah, think. especially because she kept telling him no, which is also, like... <laughs> big red flag. <laughs> but, like, big red flag also with, like, her past, so you would think that she would really insist on, I told you no. Um, but he didn't know, you know, he's just being pesky. He wasn't, like, harming her. Um, I did really enjoy that he showed up at her workplace And then, like, found out all the stuff about her, got her phone number. I think them texting back and forth was some of the, like, best, like, funny dialogue. Mm -hmm. I loved it. And I like that it called her Wellsy. I like that, too. I like that everybody called her Wellsy. Yes! The guys got it on Nobody had called her that before. (laughs) And she was like, uh... And then it just kind of rubbed off. And I I liked it. I liked the nickname. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... I just want to real quick skip to the end because, like I said, I read it, you know, like, you know. Kind of going out of order, but yeah, let's go. It's fine. It's fine. I just very specifically wanted to mention when she walked into the um, locker room at the end. Oh, my God. It was like. What did it remind you of? It was a a Cinderella story with Hillary Duff. A Cinderella story. I was like, Hillary, no, you did not just do that. I was like, L. Kennedy, how old are you? Did you also (laughs) watch Cinderella story? She stole this. She did. Um, there was one, oh, there, oh, she said at one point, I was like, I don't know how old Elle Kennedy is, but I'm feeling like she's one of us because she said, you know, it was written as Hannah was saying, I'm unequivocally in love with him. And I was like, <clears throat> Twilight. <laughs> yeah. No, when she, so, when she said that one word, I was like, my Twilight brain turned on and I was like, mm, I'm too much of a Twi hard. I don't think that. I don't think other people associate that word with anything. <laughs> Probably not, but I do, and you did, and yes. here we are. Mm-hmm. So I just liked that I was randomly picking up things throughout the book, but I was like, this is reminding me of something that has nothing to do with this book. I can't wait to read um, Twilight. Can we can we reread Twilight, please? Sure. I don't know where my books are, but... My yes. niece has my copy of Twilight, my original copy of twilight so i need to get that back from her because who knows where it is and if she's actually taking care of it did she read it did she like it um i asked her at the beginning of the summer if she read it granted she's 12 um and she was like oh no not yet and i was like we'll give it back if you're not gonna read it (laughs) well 
hell? Don't like, pop it. Don't mess it up. <laughs> and I had to tell her, I was like, this is mine from when I was your age, so please, don't crease it. <laughs> oh my don't, gosh. Is don't that how we were? Yeah. Because my librarian in middle school recommended Twilight to me when I was at the book fair. I mean, hey, shout out to that librarian. I know. She she called it before it was even a thing. Because then Absolutely. the first Twilight movie didn't come out until I think we were in eighth grade or ninth grade. Something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I read the first couple books before the actual first movie was released. Um, okay, so, yes, sorry, and back. I did not. But very off topic. Um, the deal. We're talking the about deal. the deal. We're talking about the deal, not Twilight. We'll we'll do Twilight later. Um, that will be a whole separate long series. Yes, <laughs> mini sodes. Um, the mini- deal. Yes. I loved the progression of their relationship because it was extremely subtle how attached she got to her and how much she started to trust him. Yes. And oh, shoot! Did I not silence something? Did you hear that noise? I don't think so, no. Oh. No, I did not hear anything. Okay. So, yeah, we're kind of new to this Zoom recording thing. I mean, not me, because I do this all day, every day, but some people who are recording. Yeah. Uh, she. My dog is barking, so the noise was he was texting me, and it popped up on my computer. Uh, He's closing bye. the door to make it quiet for us. Thanks, Matt. Bye. Shout out. Um. Yes, I also enjoyed how it was very subtle, and they just, like, you know, we're hanging out, living her best life, and then I loved, and, okay, <laughs> Breaking Bad, I mean, I'm not trying to be that person, but, like, it just wasn't the show for me. Me but, either! <laughs> but I'm glad they were able to bond over that. But I remember season one. I remember how crazy season one was, so when they were binge-watching it, I was like, okay, I get it, because Matt loves Breaking Bad. He's watched it several times and he That's rewatched it like this year. And I tried to watch it again with him and I got through season one and then I was just like, I yeah, like I no, I forced myself to watch all of the seasons only because I was dating somebody at the time who told me I should. I don't <laughs> separate podcasts. <clears throat> I uh, will not be watching that ever again. I'm trying um, to think of who would ask you to watch that. Okay. Yeah, no, I will never, I'll, I'll never actually finish it. I know how it ends. Because I made Matt tell me so I could get that closure. And there's absolutely no way I'm going to put myself through that series to watch the ending. Yeah, no. You Sorry don't. if you guys love Breaking Bad. Yeah, if you do, I'm honestly. I mean, so did Hannah and Gary. Right. So okay, you guys like, really also. To them. They only got, like, what, halfway through season two, so. Right? I mean, it was so we don't cute. Know. And he kept saying, he kept saying that, like, he's never had a platonic friendship where he can just, like, hang out with a girl and, like, not have it mean anything else, which I think that's why they got so close, because they started as friends. Yeah. And he had those feelings for her as a friend, and then it was just, it built on it. Yes. I've heard a lot of people do better uh, starting as friends. Like, they just grow more because they're going through different experiences and not the pressure that you would go through when you're like dating someone dating a Um, stranger dating a stranger yes i I definitely think that people who start as friends have a very strong relationship yeah um not something i can say for myself as of yet but um i mean (laughs) matt's my best friend now we did not start out as best friends so he's your your best friend my or? male best friend okay okay i'll take that we I was all like, know um, ashlyn that if you were a dude i would have married you but that's all i asked that's true. alas that's we are both female and we are not attracted to each other so i hate when that happens. i hate it when it happens the worst. i mean whatever i married um, him to fill the void okay <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad we have this recorded for future it's always me it's always me you <laughs> Get the um, door shut and he can't hear me now. I'm like, a whole different scandal. We're talking about, uh, we're talking about the book and now all of a sudden our world lives. But, um, yeah, I really enjoyed their subtlety, uh, and the slow lead up. I loved his, like, cocky bros. 
I just enjoyed how they like treated her and basically mm-hmm. were like, you're one of us. And it was like pretty quickly, like once, once she got like the stamp of approval from Garrett, which was instantly amazing. But no, like when he took her to the bar for Dean's birthday, yes. was yes. it Dean and Tucker's birthday? I think it was Dean. Was it the Monday? Yeah. The, Dean. Yeah. But like she was there and she was just like broing out with them. And it was and I like, really, I love that. But I also love that that's when she chose to also trust him and finally, like, live her life again and have that trust in him that he's going to take care of her. And he did. Even even though it made me so angry that she was basically throwing herself at him, but she was drunk and he wasn't going to take advantage of her. And I loved that. I respect the shit out of that. I Mm -hmm. mean, listen here. Yeah, she had a trauma. Like, she had trauma. And did he know at this point? No, he, he told her the next, she told him the next day because she asked him to fix her. But that right, night right, right. he w- she was just, you know, trying to come on to him and he said no. But she had told him that it was her friend. It was her friend, her mm-hmm. friend, yes. Um, and I just love, <laughs> that's what turned me on more than anything. I was like, ooh, this man is respecting her boundaries. <laughs> Excuse me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, that's a kink I didn't realize I had. <laughs> and every time they were together, he kept asking her is this okay? Or like, can I do this? Which once you're in an established relationship, that goes away. But because of her past and he sought out Birdie and like kind of got advice without actually telling Birdie what was going on. Like he tried, like he did his homework. He tried to be like comforting and just like there for her. So she would feel comfortable. I just thought I love Garrett. I loved him. Me too. (laughs) Um, yeah, there's, love this book i mean i feel like i say that about every book that we do but thankfully there's no cap i can love all the books and credit goes out to our friend laura because she came in clutch we don't read sports romance and at our last book club with our girlfriends we asked her we're like listen we need some recs for like sports and i said hockey i want to read something about hockey and she was like girl the deal by l kennedy and then she said anything by l kennedy and she has that whole other series with the football guys Yes, which, uh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm in the hockey bros, like, I don't know if I'm going to go to the football guys. <laughs> I'm just not into the sports. Like, I will read the ones that we say that we're going to read, but it's not, it's not a genre that I actively look for. I don't actively look for it either, but I think I want to read at least the second one in the Briar University because it's Logan. And Logan kind of broke my heart a little bit because he very clearly had some kind of feelings for Hannah. Yes. And, like, they kept mentioning that he, like, kept, like, looking at her with longing. And I was like, what is going on with Logan? (laughs) Poor Logan. Um, Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, again, nothing against L. Kennedy. I just don't know that I want to read another one. It's just not my genre. I have so many books on my DVR that are in my genre. Heard. Uh, but you let me know how it goes, and then maybe I will read it. Oh, I just thought of another scene that we just had to talk about because I loved it. And it was after they won the game that she went to, and Logan tells Garrett that she's going on a date with Justin. And Garrett shows up at Hannah's dorm and is like, we need to talk. And they're like throwing it down. And he's mad because he's like, well, priorities change. And she's like, what? Now you want me to be a girlfriend? Like, what's going on, Garrett? And it, I love I love that whole thing because, yeah, he stormed out. But she went out right after him in the cold. And she was like, no, you didn't give me time to process this. You told yes. me you didn't do girlfriends and you didn't give me a chance <laughs> to like yes. come to terms with you saying that things could change. And so I liked that whole thing because he didn't stay all prissy and mad at her. Exactly. Um, all I have to say is communication on point. And I respect that because usually, I'm sure you know that when you read a book like this, usually, you know, the male or female, whoever gets mad, but they don't say why they're mad. Mm-hmm. In this situation, I totally expected him to just be like, you know what, never mind. And not mention the girlfriend thing at all not mention wanting more and literally just being mad and then she's like well what the hell like what did I do yeah and I respect the communication that came from both sides especially yes what you mentioned when she ran out after him saying like hang on 
And then he was like, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. you, I did not give you time. And I was like, did you see how quickly we resolved this issue? I really thought. Hashtag communication. I really thought we were about to have like a whole thing where she went on a date with Justin because he, because Garrett wasn't talking to her. And I was like, I did too. The whole thing with Justin, like, he seemed, he seemed like such a nice guy in the beginning, but, like, Garrett knew that he wasn't all sunshines and rainbows, but, like, he never outwardly came off badly, but yeah. the more she was with I mean, Garrett, all the way till the end, he yeah, never came off. so I was like, and the more she was with me. Garrett, I was like, back off, Justin, we don't need a love triangle. True that, true that, I was like, ooh, this is genuinely just a very different version of Twilight, um, but... But she actually wanted the other guy. Well, you know, Edward is Garrett, Jacob is Justin. Yeah, but she never didn't, got a chance. She didn't start out pining for Jacob. That is true. <laughs> she that always true. wanted. She always wanted Edward. But that she didn't kiss Jacob. Uh, details. Um, but yeah, this was this was a good one. Um, all things considered. All things considered, I don't know that I have a whole ton more to add. Um, His dad. Well, obviously. I mean, there always has to be an antagonist. Yes. Fuck his dad. Oh, and also, I really also... Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I completely forgot a whole character. Um, I really enjoyed that Garrett was like, Hannah, go start the car. I'm going to go talk to Cindy. And basically was like, Cindy, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. I, And I was like, yes. Like give her validation that like this is not something that she should be being, you know being put through that this is a history of his and it's not surprising and I was just like yes save that woman genuinely save her yeah I felt so bad for Cindy and I just I mean I felt bad for both of them because they both had kind of like messed up backgrounds they did. and it they did. pissed me off to no end that her poor parents are stuck in that town that her rapist is the mayor's son and like the pastor's yes. his father and that his friends like perjured themselves and lied on the stand saying that she was like this horrible girl that's the kind of stuff I don't like like yes no it's fine in the book I don't like it because it makes me angry I don't like yes. watching it I don't like reading it but when they saw what's his face one of the friends and Garrett was just confronting him and then he called her a slut and Garrett just No, I think it was a whore. I think he said go back to your slut girlfriend or something. No, nah, whatever. It was something. He Details. called her something and Garrett like defended his girl and I was like, Yes, Garrett. I also <sighs> shout out to his grandparents not liking his dad and leaving him that trust. Literally the only thing that saved him. But yeah, no. Okay, so reading about the whole sexual assault and not being believed and all this that and the other did you ever watch the documentary on netflix not documentary show movie on netflix with the girl from last man standing where no one yes. believes that she was raped unbelievable i think is what it's yes. called yes i did and not I... finish it because i had such raw emotions watching it <laughs> like it it that upset totally me so so much totally fine i did finish it uh highly recommend Obviously, if you have triggers in any of this, you know, space of life, do not watch it. But uh, it was very worth it. I honestly would probably watch it again, even though it was heart-wrenching to watch. I just think it, like, really brought awareness to the whole situation that, unfortunately, this happens way more often than any person could fathom mm -hmm. and wants to fathom. Um, yeah, it's a very real issue that is genuinely unbelievable that this is not something that can't just be taken word for even when there's evidence yeah like when they say like the rape kit and everything it was just like they had the rape evidence kit. they have evidence but then and it they... was he said she said and then the friends backed him up and I was like this is so messed up but unfortunately Absolutely. like that stuff happens every day so, yes. I mean, it was hard. It was hard reading fiction. I, I can't even imagine what it's like in, re like, real life. Like, mm, yes. I, I can't. It's hard. That's hard. Yes. <clears throat> um, but I feel like the way Elle wrote about it, and it did feel 
obviously it was hard to read just because of the subject matter, but I think that she wrote it in a way that was also kind of like bringing awareness about it, but mm-hmm. not like harping on the negativity and, you know. Yeah, because she went other... over like Hannah's therapy and that she is not a victim. She's a survivor and Absolutely. that she's at a point in life where she's not afraid of men. Like she she's OK and she's gotten past a lot of it. But it was more of, like, deep down, like, she was still harboring, like, lasting yes. effects from it. So, yes. yeah, I liked how Elle brought it up because they, they mentioned a couple different things where they were just talking about cases and um, a lot of people don't report. And so it was, you know, it was it was eye-opening, too. Absolutely. Um, and just another correlation that I had made. Um no. Mm-mm, no. I have, I have lost my train of thought and I really I hate when that happens. Oh, okay. Whoopsie. I'm so sorry. Do you have anything oh. else to add? Um fuck her dad. Uh I can't I genuinely his can't dad. Say, or not his dad. His her dad. dad's great. Her dad is great. Um yes. Um also love his grandparents and her parents. Um man, I wish I had remember what I was going to say, but I guess it's not that important, so I forgot it, so. My last thought on this book is that I honestly wish the epilogue was further in the future because I wanted him to be pro and I wanted them to be together and I wanted to see, like, what their future was like, but I know she didn't do the future because it is, like, a series of books, (laughs) um, but there is also, I was reading her, her list of books the newest one or one of the latest ones is a novella that has oh. more of them in it. Oh, really? So I might look into it just to see. But, I'm like, looking. if I read the novella, it might spoil things for the other books. So I'm like, I don't know. But I really wish that I could see where they were in the future because, man, I just wanted her to be, like, this badass, like, hockey wife that's, like, screaming at the games. But then she's this amazing singer or doing something. I don't know. Oh, 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 I do have more to add. Thank you, because what the hell? She was a professional singer, and I completely forgot all of this. Um, Okay, so everything around the showcase. Yes. And cast and MJ, which, by the way. Horrible. Horrible. Um, Yes, and when she at the end was like, no, we are not friends, because I would never do that to a friend. And I was like, ooh, girl, yes, stand your ground. Uh, although, I mean, to be fair, like, throughout the series, or, you know, throughout the book, it did not sound like they were necessarily friends. Yeah, like they, they were I don't the think they class, were. Maybe acquaintances, if anything. But uh, I just really love that she won the, uh, the scholarship over cast mm-hmm. when we had this whole big production. And I was like, yeah, yeah, she deserves it. And she was crying because it came from an emotional place. And I really respect that. And I just wish I could write music. I am sad though that it kind of like skimmed over the showcase happening like it was really quick and then yeah. Garrett was there and mm-hmm. he was like well where else am I gonna be like that just yes. shows how much he cares about her and he just completely cock blocked her all over campus oh, and then we got back to a Cinderella story <laughs> yes and I was like I'm trying to I'm yell not... at your captain I'm like I'm not mad about it TBH mm-hmm. like I'm here for it love uh, it no, I think that may that may be about everything that I have. I really, honestly, guys, I didn't take notes during this book, and that's mistake number one. I didn't take notes because I was reading the first half in the car to Matt, so it was, like, hard to take notes because normally I highlight and make little scribbles, but when I'm reading aloud to someone, I just keep going. Yes, I, uh, I actually, I mean, to be fair, let me pull it up real quick. I did break, I, I made one note, just one, and I said... LOL at Puck Bunny. Oh my gosh, the Puck Bunnies. <laughs> I just was like, that's it. That's the entire note that I wrote, which you can't see on this. But um, yeah, I, I thought that was the one funny thing. But I was listening to this via Amazon Alexa. Did you, you just turn her on? Me. <laughs> no, probably not. Um, and when you're doing like I was driving and I was doing errands and everything else so like I didn't even think to open my notes and like be like ooh what notes about this mm-hmm. but next time I'll do it next time well overall I enjoyed my first sports romance book and I will probably read another one and I'll let you know how it goes 
please do. Hey, I mean, listen, read the one about Logan. And if it's really interesting, let me know. I'm not opposed to reading it. It's just not my first choice. I think I really want to read Tucker's, though. The guy from Texas that learned to cook and wore the pink apron in the kitchen. Like, I, I'm down yeah. for that. I want to know who Tucker ends up with. I, yes. Dean, I mean, Dean's my least favorite just because, I don't know. Wow. I'll get to Dean. He's fine. He's fine. But. Wow. Well, um, all right. Well, you do that. You read that and let me know how it goes. All right. And um, we did decide our next book. I already forgot it. What's the name of uh, it? It is Book Lovers by Emily yes. Henry. <laughs> oh, which I have. Un momento. One second. Oh, and she has to take out her headphones, so I'm just going to fill the space with my voice um, while she returns. What? Nothing. Keep going. Oh, gosh. I'm going to have to hear what you said later. All right. I it went, wasn't bad. <laughs> I went to Target today. Don't tell me. went to Target today. This is our next book. Book lovers, Emily Henry, that's the one. If you can't see it on the podcast, it's so cute. They're sitting on suitcases filled with books. I've heard really good things about it, and I think people are saying that this is probably one of the best Emily Henry books. So I'm excited to give it a go. Um, coming from two girls with too many books, I am very excited to read about book lovers. Yeah, because I think they're both like book publishers or something. Something Ooh, like that. Even better. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, before we wrap this thing up, Haley, what's something good that happened this week? Um, something good that happened. Honestly, I'm in hell week when this comes out, meaning this is the week that school starts. <laughs> so um, I'm probably just going to be dealing with parents and kids a lot. So I'll have to update you on what actually is going well for me because it might be just a little stressful. That's fair. Um, yes, with this technically coming out, not the next one, but the one after, I, uh, by that time, I will have a small victory in my life, which is a work victory, which, you know, <laughs> is what it is. Um, there's this process called going live, which basically means you're done with training, you're done with your mentorship, like you are officially a whole ass employee. Um, and by that time, I will have been live. So, I was hired in February. It Woo-hoo. only took till August, but I'm gonna make it happen. Congratulations on going live. Thank you. Thank you. There were uh, six of us in my position in my class. Only two of them have gone live so far. Oh. So, I would be number three or number four. We will see. Nice. But, uh, hopefully, honestly, hopefully, like, as like right now when we're recording it i'm hoping that it happens tomorrow but fingers crossed oh so before like the episode on the third comes out <laughs> we're yes, recording this very much in advance <laughs> very very far in advance because Haley goes back to work and she's the one who does all her stuff. i do all the editing so it's you know it's hard and social media and she basically all i do is read the books and show up so anything else that happens it's Haley. okay full, except for that red, one time when i went on my honeymoon and you actually had to do stuff I did it one time and it was like, how does she do this? Also, (laughs) not the artwork that fits our brand, but, you know, I was doing what I could. Well, I still appreciate it. So, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. And sorry it's a little different this week, but honestly, I'm kind of digging the Zoom meetings. It might happen again. No, it might happen again just because when I get off work, I don't want to fight that 5 o'clock traffic to get over to you. Unless we can do it on a weekend. Maybe one day. We'll see. Maybe I can meet your your friend. My friend. It's a boyfriend. His name is Jeremy. Maybe I can meet Jeremy. The reveal. This is the reveal. Oh, by the way, I changed my Facebook status, but I didn't make it public. What the hell? Like, I, I shouldn't say I didn't make it public. It's pu- like, if you go onto my profile, it says in a relationship, but I did not you didn't do, make it a like, post. shared timeline. Yeah. Girl, how's yeah. anyone going to know you're in a relationship? Uh, when they go to my profile and look and see that I'm no longer single. I don't want everyone and their mother to be like, what's going on? I got Why doesn't he have a Facebook? It's a long story. <laughs> That will be from Patreon. If you're interested, go to the Patreon. <laughs> okay. Well, 
we will see you guys in September. I need to look and see when this comes out. I think so, yes, because this is uh, beginning of August. One, two, no. oh, no, there's, there will be August 31st. <laughs> August 31st is when we'll see you next. I know, damn, August has a lot of days. Okay. Well, hope you're staying cool because it's still freaking hot in Texas. Um, and we will see you at August 31st with Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Henry. <laughs> you're doing it. I'm doing it. Uh, Alrighty. Well, have a super great week and we will see you in two weeks. Bye guys. Bye.